start with our top story and we have a new premier in Gauteng, former education MEC Panyaza Lusufi. He's promised to prioritize economic growth, tackling crime and redressing inequalities in the province. And he says he's going to assess and come up with a plan. He joins us in studio. Congratulations, Premier, thank you, thank you. and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first of all, who's going to replace you as education MEC? By this time tomorrow, you'll know. Okay. Um, <laughs> Are you planning big changes with your 10-member cabinet? Not necessarily. Not necessarily? Yep. So one change, just the new education MEC, or <laughs> might there be more? I'm still consulting, so I'll still know, consulting. Yeah, I'll know early tomorrow morning, but uh, I don't think there will be major changes, I must be honest. Is it your decision, or do you get told who to put in place? It's a collective decision, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously the back stops with me. Okay, so yeah, you've got to make so sure those people are competent. I have to consult the ruling competent. party because they've deployed me. I have to consult our alliance partners as well. And, and I think the reason I ask that is because if you look at the week that we have been through here in Gauteng across our three metros, it's been absolute chaos. No, I mean, so we've true. gone through so this. True. It's a national problem, what's happening at ESCOM with yeah. the load shedding. Um, but when you're sitting with stage four load shedding water and you're not getting water coming out of your taps, no. it is a very frustrating time. I think what makes it even more concerning is that we are the richest province in the yeah. country. So you don't expect things like that to happen because they're meant to be more resources. I mean, it shouldn't happen anywhere in an ideal world. But it's even more concerning on that level because it suggests that things are really yes. slipping. Um, assessing what's been happening in the province this week, um, what is your sense of what your role is going to have to be? Accountability, accountability, accountability. If you assume a responsibility that will provide electricity, why are you not providing it? If you accept the responsibility to provide water, why are you not providing it? And it can be. Uh, a statement say we are sorry we are moving to level four or mm. level three of load shedding and we think it's enough. How uh, do you hold people to account though yeah. when the problem is not necessarily of their making but began with politicians who wouldn't build power stations way before them? Well that is disputed but I accept Well no problems. actually Tom uh, Mbeki himself yeah. said look I got it wrong and even before him uh, there were politicians who didn't think maintenance was important. No, 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 I'm just saying, I, I'm not defending him. I'm just saying, I can't defend him. What I'm saying is, how can you, I'm asking how you can hold people to account today when there is uh, a long history of decisions that were not right. No, I'm saying accountability means that if it's politicians, it means that they must not come back. Uh, if it's officials, it means they must also not be there. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a strong, strong proponent uh, of accountability. Uh, I, I don't take it lightly uh, if people who accept to take a certain responsibility and they just feel if they say sorry uh, it's not the way I thought it would be it should be enough it can't be mm. uh, because it's people's lives uh, the people that depend on water that will depend on electricity and there are many people that depend in terms of employment on those issues so if we are not providing them it means we're mm. creating problems and challenges for them so accountability should be a hallmark of every person that wants to be in the public space um, Let's, let's look at the water crisis because I think, um, you know, if we thought not having power was a problem, not having water escalates the crisis within days. Um, we've spoken to a lot of water scientists, water experts in yeah. the last few days to try and understand the problem because you can't hold someone to account yeah. until you understand the problem and where it emanated from. And then ultimately, I suppose, you have to yeah. make a call. One of the things that's coming through, though, is that in our municipalities, and I know you're not a municipal yeah. leader, but you oversee three big yeah. metros as uh, the, pre the premier, is that municipalities are really bad at infrastructure maintenance. They do not look after pipes properly. They do not look after systems. They don't have a schedule of maintenance. And ultimately, this leads to problems where things break. And I mean, ESCOM is the perfect example. Yes, we know that, that mm. state capture had a massive role to play, yeah. that is still dealing with sabotage uh, and, and elements of corruption. But at the end of the day, it's also about making sure you have skilled yeah. people in the right positions yeah. and sometimes doing the boring stuff that's not going to get you votes, but that you know uh, is going to make sure that in 10 years' time we have enough reservoirs to provide the needs of a growing Gauteng population. How committed are you to making those somewhat boring choices, particularly around water, that might mean we need to fix pipes underground that no one can see and put a ribbon on, no. uh, but is going to mean we look after our province? What consoles me, the report I have, I'm not sure how correct it is, is that 
it does not mean our rivers are running dry. Uh, it's the issues that you've raised uh, of infrastructure, maintenance, repairs, and all other things. Um, and the next question becomes, why are we doing them the way we are doing them? Because uh, we need to schedule them in other things. Uh, 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 schedule them in a manner that does not cause this kind of disruptions. Um, I mean, if you have the entire sentence without water, uh, uh, it does not mean that uh, you can't have so way to attend Bisa without water. But if you have an entire community without water, uh, you are risking literally with the lives of the people. You are gambling with their lives. Uh, but we have been assured that the matter won't be long, uh, and I trust those that are advising us that it will be resolved soon. What because as I said, yeah. water is dead. If it was a uh, day zero or something, I will be worried. But if they say the water is there, the only problem is we have to deal uh, with the either mechanical challenges or infrastructure challenges. But the assurances, I must be honest, uh, are there that it will be resolved. Right. So um, y you're obviously, uh, I it's an important issue. It is. Uh, as, it is. as is electricity. And yeah. There's a national problem, of course, around mm -hmm. electricity supply. But what we're seeing certain cities doing, uh, such as the city of Cape Town, uh, even Johannesburg, and obviously we'll have to see what Dada Moreira do, does going forward. But there seems to be more leeway now uh, for individual centers yeah. to create electricity. How committed are you to really pushing the agenda of getting as much power going in Gauteng as possible. How open are you to saying to businesses, come, let's bring that onto the grid. Let's get the alternative energy. Let's get energy wherever we can. Because this is the economic heartland. And if Mr. we don't have power... It's true. And our economy is suffering because of that. Um, I, I'm, I'm a proponent of mixed uh, energy. Uh, whoever can bring whatever on the table, does accept. Uh, we are lucky and fortunate to have the sun. We are lucky and fortunate to have wind. We have all these other things that are there. So we, we are going on our lhotla and it's high on our agenda um, that we must have an alternative way mm -hmm. of managing this energy because it's affecting literally everything. Uh, I mean, it's affecting our hospitals. It's affecting yeah. factories. It's affecting schools and other things. So we, w without an independent leeway of some sort as a province, uh, we might suffer the consequences of not taking decision uh, at the right time. Would you have the power as Premier, and because and, one of the things that's spoken about a yeah. lot with power is, is bringing in incentives. I know Cape Town is working yeah. on a pilot project, but it could be every citizen who has got solar power and is prepared to sell their excess to us, we will buy it from you. Could you do that as a, as a Premier for an entire province, or would it ultimately have to devolve down to the municipalities and you wouldn't be able to have much control? I'm monitoring that model of uh, uh, the Western Cape closely. Um, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I've not gone through uh, the deeper details, but I'm monitoring it. I think creativity should be allowed, especially when we're going through this kind of difficulty. So, mm -hmm. But where we are as Gauteng, we really believe that um, if we can just have some strong, reliable, dependable energy, uh, we'll be in a position to resolve uh, this problem problem of load shedding. Mm. It's, it's, it's an irritation, I must be honest. And I think uh, the president is quite aware, the minister responsible is quite aware, and the leadership of ESCOM, that um, the way they're managing the, uh, the load shedding crisis, uh, I don't think it's ideal. I don't think it's perfect. And uh, uh, they really need to find a new mechanism. We are pleased with the new board, uh, but they have to hit the ground running. The mm. South Africans are not demanding more. They're saying, give us electricity, we'll pay for it. And I mean, uh, you're so right, and, and it's mm. time is of the essence, yeah. and I was just thinking to myself, I'm asking mm. you all these questions suddenly about electricity and water, and I'm so used to asking you questions about education, <laughs> and you're so completely comfortable. Yeah. What I like about what you said today when you were sworn in is, I don't know everything, I will assess. Yeah. I will assess. And I think yeah. part of that assessment is knowing who to trust, yeah. who has the technical skills, yeah. who can say, look, this really is the best plan to go for. So will you surround yourself with, with people who have the skills uh, to give you the right sort of advice? Is that part of your plan? I think my background in education has given me an opportunity to appreciate skills, uh, people with skills, um, because education is about skills development. Um, and I'm very worried, personally, I must be honest. Uh, we're losing lots and lots of skills for people that are leaving our country. Uh, either because of the high cost of living and, and, and majority of those things that are causing people to live uh, are what I term public goods. And 
if you've got quality education, there will be no need for people to take their children to private school. If you've got quality public health, there will be no need for people to take their, their families to uh, a private uh, medical school. If you've got reliable, dependable public transport, there will be no need for people to depend on the price of petrol for them to survive. Uh, if you have reliable water, electricity from municipalities, there will no need people to buy um, extra things so that they so the cost of living is galloping, so we just need to arrest that. And, and especially from products that are public goods. Uh, I mean, how much do you spend on your own safety? Uh, it's an alarm, it's CCTV, it's another thing. But if you have a, a dependable, strong uh, police force, uh, you know, that cost of alarms and other thing would have uh, 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 taken it somewhere. Uh, it, but you have to hire private security and many other things. So those are the things that we must tackle, um, and, and therefore when we have to formulate uh, an executive authority or executive council or cabinet to say who are the people with the skills, who are the people that will understand these responsibilities, will hit the ground running, uh, because we are 17 months away from elections, so you don't want people that mm. would say I'm still learning, and we just have to hit the ground running. Yeah, and I mean, it's a difficult one because you have to have a mind and an eye on the elections. Yep. Um, your party is in a very difficult place. The, difficult. The, you know, even your own surveys indicate yeah. that you may well fall below 50%. Um, you have to get that balancing act of obviously keeping an eye on the polls, yeah. um, believing that you're the right person to, yeah. to serve the people, um, but also doing the right thing for the people so of true. this province. So uh, it is not an easy balance to get. Um, where do you think you're going to start? I mean, what's, what's your first priority? Is tomorrow your first day in the office? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the first thing you're going to do? Let me tell you, if we can't confront crime head on, we must forget. If you can't confront lawlessness, where people can build uh, whatever they want to build anywhere, take robots down, vandalize everything, we must just kiss uh, our democracy goodbye. Um, if you are just going to have this rampant corruption across institutions of government, uh, uh, my focus is to change completely the way we are fighting crime. Uh, now, there are three key areas. Uh, one, if we can't have what I call e security, um, um, and e security is a combination of many things that one is working on. Um, for example, majority of crime, a car is involved. Uh, how do we track those particular cars mm -hmm. by the state? Uh, majority of crime, a gun is involved. Uh, how do we ensure that um, we track that? Um, South Africans want to report crime when it happens now. Uh, might not have time to go and look for a phone and look for something. Uh, how do we have uh, something that you can press, a pen, yeah. an e-panic button. That right. have, um, how do you ensure that every inch of housing is covered with face recognition uh, CCV technology? How do you empower our law enforcement agencies that may might have a helicopter now if they want to chase something, high-powered cars and many other things? Um, and how do you ensure that you've got spies um, that are paid by the state to spy on some of so that we are and not on each other, yeah. Yeah. as we have seen yeah. uh, in the past? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Crime yeah. is a critical issue, as we've seen the global impact of the tourist who was murdered in Pumalanga. We Apumalanga. have to confront crime. Horrific. Um, you, you spoke about accountability, so I'm going to ask you about yeah. something that happened as your tenure um, as education MEC, yes. and that, of course, is the school sanitation yes. project in 2020. You're on record of saying, uh, I will leave no stone unturned. Over 400 million rand was spent to clean over, what, 2,700 schools, um, and that you will hold people responsible, accountable. What was the ultimate uh, decision on that entire thing? Was it just a big, fat mistake and a waste of money because we didn't know enough about COVID, or have you hold, held anyone to account? Firstly, I think, uh, let, let's, let's put it on record that the SIU investigated the matter and they cleared me uh, that I was not involved. Or not directly involved, and, but and accountable, things. I suppose, as an overarching view. Uh, and I told you I'm a, I'm a, a, a junkie for, <laughs> for accountability, yeah. but the law is clear. There are things that the MECs can, can do. There are things that the MECs can't do. Uh, so 
if the law says you can't do that, you can't hold me accountable for it. Because the law is clear, you can't be in procurement, you can't appoint contractors. And the law says somebody who must appoint contractors uh, must not have interference of the MEC. So those that were empowered by law to appoint contractors uh, were fingered by the report, four of them. And uh, we took them to the disciplinary hearing, two senior members, two chief directors, and uh, two uh, directors. Uh, and they've just concluded their hearings, I think, a week or two ago. But the report is there, and uh, it clears our name. The only problem is that people wish that it should uh, <laughs> uh, point, point fingers at you, uh, mm. even when the law says... Well, I'll ask you that, because it is something that you know you were head of education so ultimately the buck stops with you and you know as you say you have followed through with accountability yeah. and that report has now been concluded um, I want to ask you about something else uh, and that is Babita Dio Koran yeah. um, her six uh, the six people are suspected of murdering her were in court earlier today this is a woman who from everything we understand um, was trying to expose corruption at Tembisa Hospital yeah. And it does certainly seem, from what we're hearing, we know there's a full investigation, uh, that she was trying to flag things that were not being taken seriously. Ultimately, as Premier, uh, you have to make sure that all the people under you are doing their jobs right. It's a very difficult thing because one person can do something on the side and it's very hard to know when that is happening. But are you committed to getting to the bottom of what has happened at Tembisa Hospital uh, and making sure that whistleblowers in this province are protected because you're not going to get to the bottom of crime, um, white collar crime, if you don't look after your whistleblowers. The story of Babita hurts me. It hurts me. Uh, I was born in Tembisa, uh, so I know Tembisa Hospital in and out. Uh, and what is coming out of that hospital uh, makes me question many things. But now that I'm responsible for ensuring that that matter is resolved and attended for, it must go beyond hating me uh, to acting uh, and taking decisive steps. Uh, it's one forensic report that I've already requested that it must be presented on my table tomorrow um, so that I can understand uh, what went wrong, what needs to happen. Uh, but I trust the judgment of our Premier. Uh, I've worked with him and I know how firm he is against corruption uh, and unethical behavior. So uh, I'll attend to it. But I, I really uh, and want to declare to, to her family that uh, this matter is long, it's going to be attended appropriately. It's far from being over. It's good to hear that yeah. commitment, and thank you so much thanks, uh, for thanks, speaking thanks. to us. Good luck thanks. for your first day I need it. tomorrow, <laughs> but um, um, I do appreciate your honesty yeah. in that thanks. you need to, to tackle a lot of things and you need to assess situations first. Thanks, Ali. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. Sufi, sure, sure. Khateng's a new premier.